Sports Tonight is back again. We're broadcasting live from Channels TV Sports Center in Lagos, Nigeria. It's good to have you join us to talk sports once again. I'm Austin Okonakwa. And on the show tonight, we'll take a look at what's going on right there in the Nigeria Professional Football League. Yesterday, some games were played March Day 7. It continued today. Guess what? Another away victory. That's the story. Aqua United, they went to Yobe Desert Stars to win by a single goal. And it seems the promised keepers are they've just taken their season back into their own hands. We'll talk about match day seven of the Nigeria Professional Football League tonight on the show. There's also action tomorrow, and I love it so much. It's our own football. We will talk about it. We will support it also on the show tonight. Thursday night, so get ready. It's going to be a sports flight. When I tell you, fasten your seat belts. Don't waste time. We're going to Washington. This is Sonny Young. He's standing by. And Sonny is double charged for us tonight because there are loads of topics that he wants to discuss are with us on the show. So we will have that big time on the program. Our focus is on the under-20 AFCON. What a story. The Flying Eagles, led by coach Paul Aigbogun, they're right there in Niger, won their first match against Burundi by two goals to nothing. Against South Africa, they pushed. They kept going forward, did all they could, but they didn't score a goal. It's ended goalless. Uh, but when we expecting Niger to do the job against Burundi, they couldn't. They played 3-3. Three, three. The Flying Eagles still on top of the Group A table. We want to see and assess their performance so far at the championship. And of course, I don't have any doubt that they're going to qualify for the World Cup, but uh, what's in that team? Is it good enough? Is it thick to represent Nigeria in Poland? Former Flying Eagles coach John Obo is standing by in our studio in Abuja. We're going to dissect this team, and of course, I'm going to get his opinion as regards uh, the new MPFL season that we're having. So it's going to be a loaded show uh, tonight. Don't go anywhere. Also, I have updates uh, coming from UEFA. We have updates also from the latest FIFA ranking. I won't say anything about that one. I'm, I'm leaving it for Sonny Young uh, to tell us uh, what he thinks about it. But Qatar, they, uh, they match the biggest mover uh, in the latest FIFA ranking. I'm sure you know why after uh, winning the Asian Cup. That's about the outlook of the show tonight. So much is going down in our world of sports. We are monitoring it. As soon as it comes, I'm going to give it to you. Wherever you are in the world watching us, this is Sports Tonight. I want you to be part of the program. It's going to be fun. It's always fun. So talk to us on Twitter. or channels on the Sports Sports. Facebook channels, I think Sports. You can send us an email. Sports Tonight at channelstv.com. What are you talking about? Uh, in the English Premier League, Manchester City, they are back on top of the table. Uh, tied on the same point to Liverpool, but they have a superior goal difference. So they have regained their lead. And then that, people are saying... Now the real season just started. Let's see if Liverpool can put up a fight. Let's see if Spurs can put up a fight. That's in the English Premier League. If you want to talk about it, I'm right here. We'll talk about it also. First leg of the Copa del Rey. Real Madrid won. Barcelona won. We'll also look at uh, what's going down in that one. Everything that you want to talk about in our world of sports, let's do it together. That's the feedback mechanism on Twitter. Channels underscore sports. Facebook channels I think sports. There's still more for you. All our top stories can be viewed on our website, channelstv.com, and on YouTube for us as Channels Web. Log on to m.channelstv.com, download the Channels TV app for any of those um, devices that you see right there, your iPad, your iPhone, your BlackBerry, your iOS, your Windows phones, and your Android phones. Log on to m.channelstv.com, download the app, and you'll be part of the program. Uh, it's risky pace, the action packs all those sports. So much is going down. And right here, what I do uh, with you, of course, because I can't do it alone, is to help you keep up with the pace, and then we're just going to have fun uh, in our world of sports. It's the fun factory, sports tonight, on your award-winning sports-loving channels, television. I gave you the first one, so if you're ready, let's go. Fasten your seatbelts. Let's go to Washington, D.C. It's always fun with Sonny Young. And Sonny Young is standing by to give, it, to give us more fun on the show tonight. So let's go to Washington, D.C. Good evening, Sonny Young. Welcome to Sports Tonight. 40 greetings, Austin. Always fun. Always a pleasure to be on the Fun Factory on the award-winning channel's television. Always a delight to have you, Sonny Young. Good to have you on the show once again. Let's begin with the Flying Eagles, Sonny. They're on the verge of qualifying for the FIFA Under-20 World Cup uh, that will take place in Poland. But they need to avoid a defeat against Niger, the host country, tomorrow. 
I like the Flying Eagles to make it to the semis, Austin. I think uh, they will be in the Final Four. Uh, as you mentioned, if they can get to that stage, they will book their ticket to Poland and the Under-20 World Cup. And I think the Nigerian boys will do their country proud against the host country on Friday. So I'm I'm picking them to get through to the semis. Mm, so that's it. That one was easy for you, Sonny. I, I, I love it because, you know, it's developmental football for me. Under 17, under 20, don't put pressure on them. Let's just discover talents and see what they can do from there. So uh, that's it with the flying. They go starting the, the FIFA rankings. They came out and they got everyone talking once again. Uh, what got you talking? Well, one shout out for uh, the new Asian champion, Cotter Austin. Uh, big jump in the February mm. rankings. Uh, they climbed, I believe, 38 places uh, on the table. So they're now, I think, number 55 in the FIFA rankings. They will be hosting the World Cup in 2022. So this is a big leap forward for them, Austin. I think uh, it really shows that they're trying to improve their national football program ahead of the World Cup. Mm. And uh, so we'll have to see and we'll have to watch them. I know they, they have been considered pretty much minnows in world football, but this uh, recent tournament in the United Arab Emirates where they beat Japan in the final, I think uh, they're going to be making some strides, Austin. I know, and they've got the money and they're investing so much. They don't just want to host the World Cup in 2022. They want to give you and I something to talk about. As you said, Austin, the money factor is crucial. They do have a lot of money that they can throw behind that football program, and I'm sure they're, they're reaching into their pockets mm. to make sure that football team does them proud mm. at the World Cup. Let's watch. We're here to see what's going down with our Sonny. Any shout-out for the U.S. Um, soccer team? Well, one quick shout-out. Uh, I think they're number 25 in the February rankings, the USA. But I do want to give a shout-out for Greg Berhalter, their new coach, he's off to a pretty good start, Austin. Mm -hmm. They uh, they have won their first two matches in 2019, both friendly matches. They beat Costa Rica and Panama. And I think Burhalter is really trying to uh, instill his program. And uh, so hopefully, fingers crossed, Austin, the USA will be at Cotter 2022. That's, look, it, it's beyond fingers crossed for you, Sonny. I'm also praying that your team makes it because I don't like the way I treated you when they missed out of Russia. So I, I want you to smile for Qatar 2022. So let's wish Berhalter and uh, his team all the best. Sonny, when it's getting to deadline trade day, you see clubs running to make that move, to complete that signing. Who is moving for the NBA deadline trade? Well, the big name being uh, bandied about, Austin, is Anthony Davis of the New Orleans Pelicans. The Lakers have expressed interest in acquiring Anthony Davis. The Celtics say they might make their move after the season ends, but Davis has, has publicly said he wants to be traded. But another big man who was traded, Kristaps Porzingis, of the, uh, he previously played for the New York Knicks. He was dealt to the Dallas Mavericks. And this is a huge trade, Austin, in that Porzingis will now be teamed up with this young rookie from Slovenia, Luka Doncic. Hmm. Uh, Porzingis is from Latvia, very versatile, big man. The question marks now, though, are about his health. He had knee surgery last year, and he hasn't played at all in 2019. But if he comes back healthy, the Mavericks should really have made a, a big boost, I think, by acquiring Porzingis. Here in Washington, Austin, uh, more bad news, uh, I have to say. Sorry. The, the sorry. Wizards have just been imploding, uh, uh, imploding before the All-Star break. They dealt one of their highest paid players, Otto Porter. They dealt him to the Chicago Bulls. In return, they got Jabari Parker and Bobby Portis. Oh the Wizards right now are trying to lower their payroll uh, by, by getting rid of some of their higher paid players. Uh, the big the big bad news, though, uh, John Wall, their all-star point guard, mm. we're not going to see him on the uh, basketball court probably uh. for probably for another year or so, Austin. What? Uh, he ruptured his Achilles tendon. Uh. And so we're not going to see John Wall for a long time and question marks about whether he'll come back at full strength after uh, Achilles tendon surgery. Uh, sorry, Sonny. Shame. 
Because John Wall has been the one carrying your team. And I wonder uh, how Bradley Bill is going to, you know, hang in there. I didn't just know one year. Sonny, how is the Washington Wizards going to survive? I don't know, Austin. And Wall's game is really built on quickness and cutting and uh, explosive moves to the basket, which really puts a lot of pressure on your Achilles tendon. So a lot of people are wondering uh, if Wall will even be the player he once was. Uh, we still have Bradley Beal. Uh, he made the all-star team this year, but the Wizards are hurting for sure, Austin. I don't know. I, I, uh, I can't even jest you anymore, Sonny. It's just... Now I feel for you and your Washington Wizards. But let's see. It's a team sport. Let's see if the other guys are just going to, you know, get back on track and play uh, for John Wall. Sadly, sadly. So let's talk about Super Bowl 53. You couldn't make a prediction, and I understand. Uh, but uh, the New England Patriots, they went on to win mid record. But son, the stats doesn't look good for the Super Bowl this year. No, you're right, Austin. Uh, a lot of people were predicting a high-scoring game between two high-powered offenses, but it didn't turn out like that. In fact, it was the lowest-scoring Super Bowl in, in the history of the game, uh, over 50 years, final score 13-3 to in favor of the New England Patriots. But the television audience was also down this year, Austin. And one of the reasons, I think, is that the Patriots – it's really almost become their personal Super Bowl, and a lot of a lot of fans would like to see new teams in the big game. Wow! Uh, rather rather than the same team uh, every year or every other year, mm. so I think that would help spice up the game a little bit yeah. if some of the other teams made it to that stage. But uh, it's still a big event here in the United States, but. The, uh, the TV ratings were down this year for the Super Bowl. It did, and too bad. If a team is good, then let them keep winning. The other guys need to up the game. But, Sonny, I love the way the fans came out to celebrate the Patriots. No, the, the Boston sports fans, they've had so much to cheer about uh, over, over the, the past two decades, Austin. Uh, they had, they've won championships not just in the National Football League, but mm. the Red Sox, the city's baseball team, they just won the World Series championship about, I think, about three, four months ago. Uh, they, the Celtics won the NBA title in 2008, and the Patriots, of course. So Boston is a huge sports town, and the fans never get tired of those big parades in downtown Boston. Of course. That's for sure. Yeah, <laughs> they came out in their numbers. They were singing, they were dancing. It was beautiful. I love it when when teams win for the fans because that's their bragging rights right there. Sonny, let's talk about boxing. We love talking about boxing. Let's do just that. Uh, I've been hearing about Joshua and Mila. Let me just quote what boxing promoter uh, Eddie Hearn said. He says, Anthony Joshua will get a chance to create an iconic moment in New York City as a deal to fight Jarrell Mila draws closer. Sonny, is that the sort of fight you're looking forward to? You know, I'm looking forward to it from the fact that uh, I think a lot of American fight fans are going to get their first real good look at Anthony Joshua Austin. Uh, he's been fighting primarily in the United Kingdom uh, for, for many of his big fights. And fr from a business standpoint, I think AJ wants to come to the USA to maybe build his pay-per-view profile. Uh, the fights here in the States, they charge a little more for him than they do in Britain. And I think that's one of the big reasons he's going to fight at uh, Madison Square Garden, which is one of the uh, – that's one of the marquee venues, Austin, for uh, – I mean, Muhammad Ali fought Joe Frazier at Madison Square Garden. It, it's hosted many great fights over the year. But this guy he's fighting, I think his nickname, Gerald Miller, is the Big Baby, the Big <laughs> Baby. And I think the Big Baby is probably going to be crying, Austin, at the end of that, at the end of that fight. I know. And, and if Anthony Joshua – should come to America and fight, the only one that doesn't have any excuse again is leave America and come to the UK to fight. Yeah, I, I, I really hope that after this fight in June, we're going to see some movement uh, with Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury, mm -hmm. uh, for that matter. Uh, those are the big three in the heavyweight division, for sure, Austin. But uh, for now, AJ, coming to the States and... Uh, We'll, we'll, give them, we'll throw out the red carpet for A.J. Austin. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and then uh, it will make a big baby cry. Sorry. 
thank you so much for your time. Always a delight to have you on the show. Always a pleasure to be on the Fun Factory, Austin. Thank you so much. <laughs> That's it.